this is me around eight years ago. <laughs> yeah, I know, I'm, I was pretty cute. <laughs> so at this stage of my life, like any other six-year-old, I was a lot more inclined to ask certain questions like, why is the sky blue? Or why are bubbles round? Several years later, I went through the COVID pandemic, and I saw firsthand just how many jobs we lost to AI. AI has already started to replace humans in the Henna Hotel in Sasebo, Japan. The entire primary staff is made up of robots, from a small personal bedside alarm to a multilingual velociraptor concierge. How awesome is that? The president of the public relations office said that they initially adopted the robots to keep labor costs down and as a solution to a limited workforce because of the COVID-19 pandemic. The US lost around 40 million jobs at the peak of the pandemic. And while some of these jobs have come back, some may never return. One group of economists estimates that 42% of these jobs are lost forever. Now, see, this is nothing new, right? We've seen this before. The spinning jenny replacing weavers, buttons replacing elevator operators, and the internet driving travel agencies out of business. What makes this one any different? Kaggle, a data science company, issued an open challenge to anyone that could create algorithms capable of grading high school essays. Later on, they began testing for algorithms that could diagnose eye diseases, in this case, diabetic retinopathy, all from an eye scan. AI was able to deliver a lot more efficiently and the best results when put in comparison to what human experts computed were in fact quite accurate. The US will lose around 80 million jobs by 2035. Jobs such as construction, retail, accounting, telemarketing, and proofreading will all be lost. Jobs with high amounts of mundane, repetitive tasks. So the real question becomes, what will human's role be in the future with AI in the picture? I like to call them the three Cs. Curiosity, creativity, and compassion, because they are the key differentiators between our world and machine learning. Talking about curiosity, it's the spark that allows us to learn more about a certain topic. If you were to show a child a candle, they would be most attracted to the flame, and they would ask certain questions, leading to them learning more about it. This is something that a machine can't do. It can give you information, but it's impossible for a machine to ask questions, be curious. You can only feed a machine information. James Faraday, a renowned physicist, had a theory. If you were to study one object in this world very deeply, you would end up studying the entire universe. This is because studying about one thing leads you to become curious about another. Same is the case with creativity. I describe AI as any form of technology that can mimic the human cognitive process. Using data, magic, ma uh, sorry, making logic-driven jumps, and reaching a conclusion. Now, I mean, it's clear that given, uh, given the right data, uh, machines are going to outperform humans at tasks like these. A teacher might read 10,000 essays, an ophthalmologist might see 50,000 eyes. A machine can read millions of essays and see millions of eyes within minutes. AI is merely eliminating the amount of mundane, repetitive tasks for humans to do, leaving us with a lot more time and more energy to focus on bigger issues. However, there's something that we can do that machines cannot do. I believe where machines have made very little to no progress at all is in tackling novel situations. They can't handle things they haven't seen many times before. At its very core, the fundamental limitations of machine learning is the fact that it needs to learn from large amounts of previous data. Now, humans don't. Our brains are wired to be creative and, can, and are naturally resilient to all kinds of problems. This is what sets us apart. We have the ability to be creative and think freely, while a machine can only think based on its previous data. I mean, we have the ability to connect seemingly disparate threads to solve problems we've never even seen before. Part of being human is being able to carry and share other humans' burdens. That's what makes life beautiful. 
we have the ability to be compassionate and understand what someone might be going through, unlike AI. This allows us to forge deeper mental connections with people around us and identify key problems that we must solve while witnessing injustice. And I believe that yes, while AI can mimic the human cognitive process to some extent, it can definitely not feel emotions the same way we do and cannot feel pain the way we do. June 2018 saw coast to coast of America citizens protesting for the rights of immigrants. They understood the trials and suffering being put on them and empathized with them. And this is something that AI can't do. It cannot comprehend the suffering of another the way we can. So an example of this framework in action is the invent it would be the inventor of the modern microwave, Percy Spencer. So he was a physicist working on radar during World War II who noticed that his chocolate bars in his pockets would always melt while working with magnetrons. Curious about this, he studied the chemical reactions happening in the chocolate bar, which led him to understand a common problem most people were facing with the help of his compassion, preserving food and heating it later on. And then he was able to devise a solution with the help of his creativity. Which, some, which all of us know now today as the modern microwave. The main point I want to get across to all of you is this. We should not fear AI or teach our children to be afraid of it. Yes, there may be some things that it performs excellently at, but it cannot do what a human can, which is be curious, use compassion to find different problems, and solve these problems creatively.